All right, let's talk about lists of elements. So let me present you a problem. Imagine that once again, today is the Tesco day or Sainsbury day. Yeah, let's talk about baskets. So imagine that I got a list of uh, elements, yeah? Um, and as part of the list of elements, I got uh, apple, I got uh, uh, artichoke, and I got toilet paper, yeah? And because of whatever reason, we got two toilet paper packs, and we, because we are good citizens, and we don't want to let anyone, you know, we don't want to have any shortage, any toilet paper shortage. We essentially we want to find if there is any repeated element on the basket, yeah. And if there is, if we realize that by accident we try to buy the same product twice, regardless of whether it's toilet paper, apples, bananas, or whatever, then we want to remove it, yeah? We want to have a unique list of elements. I hope you agree with me that's a fairly common use case scenario. We want to remove the duplicates of a list, yeah? Ignoring the topic. So, first of all, let's solve the problem using uh, an, using arrays. This is an array of, of strings, yeah? That's pretty simple. So using an array of uh, an array of strings, even though from a human point of view the problem is trivial to solve, technically speaking, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. So what I will do, I, let me present you two alternatives, two two ways of solving the problem, and you will see that none of them will actually convince you. So my first idea will be, I will create a new basket. So I will get a new, uh, from a human point of view, what I will do is I will get a new empty basket and then I will move all the elements one by one from the old basket to the new basket. Yeah? So how can we do that? Well, basket dot for each. You remember for each, guys? We talked about that last week. Basket dot for each. And then for each item, if the item is not on the new basket then add it yeah so if something we need to we need to figure out what then unique baskets unique basket dot push item and finally we can do console.log uh, the list of unique elements is and then unique basket okay. so now the complex part is writing the if statement so how can anyone tell me how can i check if an element is part of a list if item if each item belongs to the basket can anyone tell me how to write that Like that? That's very interesting, Adam. That's very interesting. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. What happened if you don't negate it, Adam? Correct. Correct, you're right. So in this particular case, if, if we run it, the list of unique elements is empty. Why? Because by default, unique basket contains nothing. Does nothing includes toilet paper? No. Does nothing includes Apple? No. So line number six will never run. Yeah? However, Adam was suggesting to negate it. And that makes sense. Because if you negate it, you say it. If the new basket doesn't include my item, then add it. So if we run that, see? So now this is removing the duplicate. It's removing the duplicate toilet paper. Any questions, guys? Hello?
helpful. Thank you. So that's the first way you can solve the problem. Let me solve the problem using reduce. You remember we talked about reduce. So with reduce, the problem gets simplified slightly, slightly. So with reduce, we can do basket.reduce and then we got unique basket and then we got the item. So before I forget, let me return the unique basket. So now the condition is the same, right? So if unique basket dot includes item, if it doesn't include it, as Adam suggested before, then let's add it. So that's exactly the same problem. The only difference is in this occasion, uh, we can essentially just use reduce so we don't need to create a, to initialize the variable. Actually, I forgot to initialize it to an empty array. Yeah? That's pretty much the, the only difference. So just to prove that we understood that, let's add our matrix of iterations. So iteration and then we got unique basket and then we got the item and then we got the return so let's go step by step so on iteration number uh, one um let me give me just a second uh, yeah, okay, I get it. So, Adam, can you tell me what's the value of unique basket on iteration number one? Correct, that's correct, Adam. So, what's the first item, Panos? Correct, that's correct, Panos. And what do we uh, return Daniel? A string? Like that, Daniel? What do you think, guys? Correct. So it returns an array containing the first element on the basket, which is toilet paper. That's correct, guys. Iteration number two. Let me simplify, let me reduce the, the wording, otherwise it will run out of space, right? Toilet paper, fantastic. So on iteration number two, um, what's the value of a unique basket, Minji? So an array containing the toilet paper, correct. And now can uh, Ian tell me what's the item on the second iteration? Correct, it will be the apple, yeah, fantastic. So finally, what do we return Adam? That's correct, that's correct, fantastic. Cool, so let's go with iteration number three. Um, what's the unique basket, Panos? I think you are on mute if you are trying to speak. <laughs> correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Fantastic, thank you, Panos. And what's the third item, uh, Daniel? Correct. So, Apple. Oh, sorry, guys. I selected the wrong uh, weird list of elements, right? Artichoke. Fantastic. So, what do we return, Minji? Like that? What do you think? Ah, and what about the artichoke? Do we have an artichoke or not? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Cool, so finally, iteration number four. What's the uh, basket about, Ian? Uh, 
correct. So we could that's correct. That's correct. And was the item uh, Adam? That's correct. So finally, what do we return Panos? Correct. So we are not adding. We are not adding the final uh, element, the final item on the basket, right? Because the toilet paper was already included. That's correct. I know that. I mean, I'm very happy that you found a way to explain really well this exercise. Because once again, guys, remember, reduce is arguably, uh, under my point of view, the most important method when talking about arrays, and that means a lot. Yeah. So it's very, 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 very important to master this process. So anyway, yes, historically speaking, that was the way we could essentially. Uh, remove the duplicates and now pay attention because I'm going to uh, replace this one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code with a single line. So let me remove the uh, reduce thingy and now yes, look at something. So now using map, we can remove the duplicates automatically look let unique basket equals no not map sorry set new set look at the syntax that's it this line of code is some sort of equivalent to these six lines so new set receives an array and it removes the duplicates nothing more nothing else You see, the list of unique elements is toilet paper, apple, and artichoke. It automatically removed the second toilet paper. Look at how simple it is. Can you tell me, using an array, how can you get the size of the list? So, if we want to display the size of the new basket is... Oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. When dealing with arrays, we use dot length, right? But now, what's the problem? Is unique basket an array? It's a set, correct. So we cannot use length because we are not using an array anymore. We are using a set and set has a different API. You see, if I use dot size, it works. But if I use dot length, that won't work. You see, the size of the basket is, is undefined. So you should be careful, guys. You should be careful. It is it is very easy to um, transform an array into a set to remove the duplicates. But once you've done that, you should be aware that you don't have an array anymore. You have a set. And because of that, the methods uh, can be different. So the API is slightly different. I never really understood why they did that. Personally, for consistency reasons, we should use length. yeah, Because at the end of the day, we have two lists of elements. However, that doesn't work. Anyway, that's a different story. Yeah, that's the way you can check the size of a set. Any questions? Well, I, clearly getting rid of the duplicates is the main one. Um, with set, you can you can do you can, for instance, easily check if uh, a set has something. So, for instance, um, do I have an apple? You see, apple. If I pass a banana, that should return false. Uh, 
here you go. Do I have an apple uh, or a banana? Yeah, you get my point. So with uh, set, we can easily determine whether uh, uh, a set, uh, that collection has an element or not. But to be honest with you, that's not a huge advantage because with arrays, as you can see here, we got includes as well, which is very similar. Yeah. So um, as far as I am aware, no, Daniel, the main advantage of using set is the ability of removing the duplicates. Ah, uh, that's the next part of this workshop. So I'll go back to that question in a minute. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Someone had another question, I think, before? Ah, the same question. Cool, fantastic, fantastic. So yeah, let's go back to Daniel's point. So Daniel was asking, all right, so we see the value of transforming an array into a set, yeah, which is removing the duplicates. However, is, can we do the process on the other way around? So what if we, let's start from scratch. So let basket equals new set. And then we got apple, banana, banana, yeah. Is there any uh, point of converting basket, which is of type set into an array? Yes, yes. Don't forget guys that the array is the most powerful data structure in JavaScript. In some occasions, in some occasions, we can deal with sets and that's fine. So for instance, what if we're going to iterate over all the elements on the set? We can use for each. For each is a method of uh, the um, array, but it also works with sets. So for instance, here we can do console.log the item is item. We can do something like that. And if we run it, you see, it displays two items, the apple and the banana, obviously removing the duplicates. So that's fine for basic operations we can use for each. However, can we use map? Let me show you. No, map is not supported by set. Can we use reduce? No, reduce is not supported. Can we use, I don't know, find? Find is not supported. You get my point. You get my point. So sets are not as powerful as arrays. So what happened if we really need to use find? Yeah, imagine that after or find or I don't know, or reduce, we really need to use any of the array methods. We definitely need to transform the set into uh, an array. There are two ways of doing that. I would like to explain the first one, and I will explain the second one on the next week. I think on the 24th, it's not the 24th, on the 25th of March, we'll talk about the REST operator. If you've done some training on JavaScript Intermediate, you may have seen, you probably already came across the new and, and a spectacular technique called the REST operator, yeah? But I'm not going to explain that now. That will be on the 25th. For now, let me present you how to easily transform a set into an array. In JavaScript, there is a method called array.from, and then you can pass something that looks like an array. That's highly controversial. Yeah, that's highly controversial. So in JavaScript, we got arrays, yeah? Arrays easy peasy. So that is an array. When you declare something, a comma separated list of elements surrounded by a square bracket, that's an array. However, we also got the structures that are similar to arrays, but are not considered arrays, strictly speaking. 
set is a good example. I hope you agree with me that a set is something that looks like an array because at the end of the day, it's a list of elements. Yeah. So when you do array dot from basket, that returns an array with all the elements contained into the basket set. You see, that's a pure array. So because it's a pure array, we can use, for instance, map. Imagine that we want to convert, guys, all the uh, fruits into capital. Yeah, we want to write a apple with capital letters and banana with capital letters. Can anyone tell me how to complete the exercise? Hello? Dot map? Yeah. What else, Minji? Yep. 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 What do you think, guys? Do you agree or not with Minji? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yep. You see, using map, as we saw on the last week, we are essentially iterating over each element on the basket, and then we are transforming them. Remember, guys, as we saw on the last week, that map takes an array. This is our array. Yeah? And then it goes through its element, and for each element, for each item, for each fruit, we return a new element. Yeah? In this particular case, we want to take the fruit, and return a new fruit uh, with uh, in, written in capitals, as you can see here. Yeah? Can we repeat the process without converting? Let me leave it there for reference purposes. So can we do the same thing with a, using a set? No, we can't. It's not that simple. Yeah. Why? Because map is not supported by set. So if we try that, that throws an error. What do you think, guys? Any questions? Yep, yeah. cool. So set is a new data structure in JavaScript. Um, it's, once again, it's not as powerful as, uh, as arrays, but whenever you uh, uh, you want to remove duplicates, yeah, it's extremely convenient. Uh, let me tell you something. When I created the first bunch of questions uh, in the Codery platform, I'm talking about 2017, I'm not sure if set was, was supported already. Probably it was already, but it was very new. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't even know it existed in 2017. Um, and because of that, some of the JavaScript questions on expert that, uh, that you have to deal with duplicates, were way more complicated <laughs> and now if you deal with them using set you will notice that some of the experts some of the advanced questions on javascript got much much easier thanks to set and i think that's the, the entire point about javascript and any programming language every year every year the standard brings new features to simplify the process of coding same thing applies to react yeah? when talking about uh, about hooks yeah, when using uh, hooks with React, uh, essentially everything gets much much simpler, as we will see in the next workshops. And that's pretty much it for me, guys. Anything else? Any final thoughts about map versus set? Yep. Lowercase the array first and pass it to the... What do you mean lowercase the array first, Adam? 
Uh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. So you are wondering if Seth will remove them. We'll remove one of them. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. If we wanted to do that, so let me create uh, another basket with potential duplicates. So first of all, will, and then let's obviously replace that. Will the basket be able to remove uh, the second banana? What do you think? No, you're right, because they are the case is different. Yeah? So how do we deal with the problem? Well, first of all, as you said, um, we will have to uh, remove the, um, the or normalize the example by removing the capitals or converting everything to lowercase. Yeah? You see, so now the new basket will have two bananas all written in lower cases. So if we run it again, now the set, as you can as you can see, only has a single banana. So yeah, I think that the strategy is is relatively common. We can see that in many occasions. For instance, you know when you create an app and you build a login form. Or a sign up journey. So essentially, you're saving email and password. Yeah. So, I'm not sure if it happens to you at some point, but it happens to me sometimes that you know when you enable the um, capital or you, when you are typing in capitals and you don't notice and you're typing your email and you type something like that. And then you get a message saying, oh, this email account doesn't exist. And then I say, okay, how, how come it doesn't exist? It actually does exist. The problem is that when I sign up, I sign up using lower cases, yeah? but some systems are unable to determine that these two email addresses are the same. That's why when you build a, an email system, what you do to compare, so let enter email equals that. I mean, this is the email that I enter. Um, so then let original email instead. Yeah, obviously, if we compare these emails, what will that return, guys? False, of course. Yeah, that will return false. So, can anybody tell me how to solve the problem of comparing emails that are written with different case? Anyone? Yes. Like that? Correct. That's a really good point, Daniel. We, we should do the same in both sides because what happened if by accident when I sign up into the platform, I did something like that. You don't know where the upper cases are. So I think that's a very healthy strategy, Daniel. Yeah, You convert everything to lower cases, and then our algorithm is able to convert these two tokens, regardless of whether they are written in lower or in uh, capital cases. Anything else, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah, please, first of all, uh, drop the message on Slack so we're aware that you need some help. And then 
depending on the question, it could be solved using a Slack. So for instance, hey, I'm playing with this exercise on the platform and I don't know why it doesn't work and you share the snippet. Or I'm dealing with this task on Coldflix and it doesn't work and you share the snippet. So sometimes, sometimes we will be able to support you on Slack. However, sometimes it will require some sort of face-to-face -face interaction. If that's the case, we will join a private room like the one you are at the moment and we will do screen sharing and we'll, you know, we'll deal with the problem following a voice-based uh, uh, messaging channel. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Any Anything else, guys? No? Cool, fantastic. Thank you very much for watching. And once again, guys, we are here to help. So if you have any question, drop us a message. And if you want to solve the board challenge, drop us a message. Drop me a message as well. Thank you very much.